Scarves and Spikes, episode four, right? I think that's where we're at. Episode four. You pronounced awesome. it right. Good. Pronounced <laughs> it right. We're off on the right track. Hey, we're going to get this by the, by the time the season starts. Tommy Moose here with Tyler Pilgrim. Sydney Hunt with no R. Not Hunter. Nope. N- not a Hunter. Uh, we got a lot of talk about today. We have transfer rumors and the craziness of players coming in and a surprising mm-hmm. one coming out. We've got the MLS Apple TV uh, program just starting today. Lots of content. Mm-hmm. Atlanta United's in Mexico. We got an, another trophy added. We'll talk about what that trophy is. And to start it off, I think we got some really good news, right? We got a we game do. to talk about. We do have, we have a, game. a game since October. But there's some we, bad news. We yeah, it depends on how you want to define it. <laughs> <laughs> we have to talk about what we experienced oh, on man. Saturday. And I think we all had different – Sydney and I were running Twitter, uh, mm-hmm. going back and forth on that. Tyler, you were there. What was the atmosphere like? So I, I got to say, the there's no other – you know, we're, we are kind of we are kind of spoiled, honestly, as a as a fan base, because we do legitimately have all joking aside, one of the best fan bases in, in the country. Um, yeah. And they showed out that day. It was awesome. It was really, really cool. Chattanooga, great hosts, as usual. Uh, you know, if, if you're ever just up that way, it's a two hour drive. If you ever go to get a chance to see a Chattanooga FC game, you know, just go go check it out. It's a great atmosphere regardless. But then you bring in the Atlanta United fans. And the, you know, the rowdiness that, that they provide, it was, it was great. I mean, I was in section 102, uh, shout out to everybody that came up and said, Hey, you know, um, Sonny, coach, Steve, Alex, ev- everybody that came up and said, Hey, mm-hmm. you know, I appreciate you guys, all of us I appreciate you guys listening and checking it out. But, um, yeah, I mean, it was just, it was a good time. It, it felt like a little bit of home up at Finley stadium, you had the, you had the drums, you had the chants, you had the, so the whole supporter section going on. Um, but everybody just, it, it was a great time. I think speaking probably for the Chattanooga folks as well. I mean, it was just a good day to be a soccer fan and go out there and, and check out a game. Yeah. It's a, uh, it's a great ground. I, I didn't go on Saturday, but I've been, as I mentioned last week, a couple of times to Finley stadium, but it's really great ground, really great atmosphere. Um, the first time there, I, as I think I mentioned last time, was the first ever friendly for a lady that I guess trying to get FC. Uh, then I went before that to uh, the U.S. Jamaica friendly that they played there. But yeah, really nice stadium. I mean, it wasn't built for soccer, obviously, but really nice stadium. People were great. Chattanooga, as you mentioned, Tyler tours up the road. That's um, unless you run into traffic before the state line, which always <laughs> yeah. seems to happen. Yeah. <laughs> Whenever I go up there, at least, but. Yeah, it sounds like it was a great time, and even though the result wasn't really what we all expected, I don't think any of us predicted 3-3 <laughs> last week, but yeah, it was interesting, interesting performance. I'll just leave it at that for now. The stream was really good. It, it started off a little shaky. Uh, there was no sound for about the first 10-ish minutes. Uh, then the sound came on. Commentary was great. And then a Shout right out to around... Dan Nelson, by the way. Yeah, and Lucas yeah. Zika, I think his name was. So shout out to those guys, John, of course. Maybe if you know from soccer down here. Also calls a lot of the, the twos games. So mm-hmm. well, what happened a little bit later <laughs> with the sound, you could hear the you could hear the crowd, and there was a chant that started. I think right when uh it was three to three. <laughs> Tyler, what what were the fans chanting? Uh it was it was something along the lines of <laughs> Boca out, and it got. Oh, my word. You know it was coming, right? It, it's, <laughs> it's just. I don't think it's ever going to go away, honestly. And you know, it's a preseason game. Yeah. We have a rowdy group of people. We have a rowdy group of fans, and it's it's they're, they're having fun. But yeah, I mean, you know, you you go to a. a Nisa, a third division squad, thinking, oh, we're going to go up there and, and it's just going to be a walk in the park. And there's a lot of factors in play, obviously. But when you when you go up there as an MLS side and in the first half, there are six goals scored and it's 3-3, there's going to be some angry people. And 
mm-hmm. rather frustrated, mostly at the defense, but rather frustrated. <laughs> mm-hmm. For sure. And so we find out before the game even starts, we knew NTN wasn't going to play. Then we find out Mascara's has a knock. We'll talk about that knock a little bit later. And then we find out Amada, who we've heard got a knock in practice. We didn't know he wasn't going to play. And they announced right before the game that he wasn't going to be there. So instead, we got a Rosetto Ibarra midfield. Mm-hmm. Rosetto playing as, a, as an attacking midfielder, essentially. <laughs> If that's what you want to call it, sure. If <laughs> On that's, paper, that's what that was. <laughs> that was that was something. The game starts. You're really excited. You're ready to. We have Machop Chol as well. You got to got to mention Machop Chol too. Yeah, Machop Chol. Uh, we'll get to him because he. I think he yeah. was one of the bright spots uh, of the day. Mm-hmm. The game starts immediately, and everybody's ready to yell "goose." You know, for the first time in over a year, and they yelled "goose." Yeah. Wow. You know, the thing about it is taking into account all of of the defensive mistakes and all, it's easy to throw out the, the excuse of, you know, it's preseason game. I get that. And it is. It's a preseason game. There's a lot that you just don't need to worry about, admittedly. But I think it's so easy for the fan base and for everybody, really, that, that covers the team analytically and everything else to look at it on the back of last year and be like, Oh God, here we go again. You know? Right. And you're, you're not wrong. in, in thinking that it is very, very easy to, to look at what happened in Chattanooga and be like, dang, here we go. <laughs> right. But you got to look at a, at a goalkeeper who hasn't played competitively in what nine months or something, yeah. eight months. Uh, he had an uncharacteristic mistake. It happens. Get it out of your system now. Um, you had some, I th- honestly, I think the biggest one that I would be a little concerned about and, and people will probably look at the third goal and they think, Oh, Hey, that's the, that's the bad one because you have Gutman that gets just unfortunately annihilated by a 20 year old from, from Dalton, Georgia, <laughs> yeah. uh, who, but who played a great game. He, it, it was, it was rough. You know, he got beat. Um, Tiredness is definitely starting to set in at that point. Um, there was some issues with maybe positioning and all that, but it was the second goal that I'm just like, Hey man, somebody clear the freaking ball at some point, please. And I think that was the one where I'm like, if I'm going to draw anything from any of the defensive mistakes, it was that one. There's just a lot of lackadaisical kind of movement that you can't have yeah. uh, going forward. Yeah, I'd like to think though that you know, even with those all those mistakes and there were plenty of them, I'd like to think that Lady United went in not naive enough to think that they could kind of sleepwalk their way to a win. I mean, it is a friendly, it is preseason. While Atlanta United haven't played in a few months, neither have Chattanooga FC. And Chattanooga FC, I essentially don't know who they're playing in 2023. I mean. Nisa just announced their schedule or the teams that will be in the league, I think, like a couple of days ago, if I'm not mistaken. So, that being said, while it is preseason, and while I see a lot of people say this on Twitter, you don't want to panic too much about preseason. You have to look at it as, and this is not disrespecting Chad Nigga FC at all. We have Rob Underwood last week, great guy. Great coach. Rob, great yeah, Rob, you to Rob respect Underwood. us. He told you to respect him. He yeah. said, "Respect our our. We can yeah. we can ball, and they balled. They did, and I I don't want to disrespect them at all. But I mean, at the same time, this is a team you beat six nil in U.S. Open Cup last year, and really you've had no trouble, or you should have no trouble with whether it's preseason, whether it's, whether it's a competitive match at the U.S. Open Cup. But I hope that." It's an aberration, really. I hope that it's just rust. Because Dan said, you know, it's just rust for me not playing for a few months. I hope that's all it is. I think along with that, you have to take the fact that Brad Kazan is 38 or about to be 38. So you have to take that into account. But other than that, you hope that it's just a bump in the road and guys are just kind of 
getting back into routine. Well, and, and this is exciting things goal. to come. You look at that goal too, though, and and that's not like a that's not an age factor goal. You know, that's not a mistake that you can chalk up to. Oh, he's you know he's thirty eight or whatever. That's just okay. legitimately in defending his end here. That's just you haven't played competitively in a while. Didn't feel the ball right. Didn't hold on to it like he wanted to. Probably should have let it roll out in the first place. It is what it is. Get it out of your system now. And that's that's my right. thing. Like, you know, there's a lot to take from the match. The biggest thing is is always going to be the defensive mistakes. Do it now. You know, do it now. Have those those flubs now. Get them out of your system. Learn from them. That's the biggest thing. So that you don't go into the, the season in less than a month with, you know, defenders not marking folks. Um and all that. Plus, you got you got to factor in fitness, and that's not an excuse because Chattanooga also is coming off their preseason. And actually, and we had Rod on last week. Um, he was even saying that they're coming into their preseason two weeks earlier just to play this match against Atlanta. Mm-hmm. So they were getting started way earlier than they were supposed to. So it's not an excuse, but it should be a wake up call. There is a right. concern though that you you need to think about from last season and unfortunately now that apple provides you the ability to watch these games went back and just started a few of them and remember this team allowed goals in the first 10 minutes on a consistent basis and we did it again and that's what i'm going to be watching for the rest of the preseason is can this team start off the game the right way and it always felt like they found a way to make some silly mistake in the first 10 minutes. And I and think that that's, they, and they always got punished for it. You know, they never got any luck and your entire game plan, whatever it is, especially, you know, when you're at home and this has always been with Atlanta United, it's a team comes up, goes up early on you. They're going to park the bus. That's what they're going to do. And Atlanta United's always had problems with it. And, you know, there was a good 30% of the season where you start the game down one, nothing in the first 10 and you're just having to fight back. And what happens usually? You allow a second goal. And it, it goes downhill from there. So that's my main thing that I want to watch for the rest of this preseason. To see if they can start. Because that is a coaching issue. But that's also a player issue as well. If they're not ready to play, then that's you know that's going to be a concern for the entire season. Uh, all over again. And that's something I think Pineda is going to, that's going to fall on Pineda as well. And there were so many reasons why we went down one, nothing last season. when We looked at it. Sometimes they got too cute. um, Trying to make the perfect pass, make a trick pass. It didn't work out. Just didn't play defense to start. Mm -hmm. But, you know, this one was just a silly mistake. You know, rust, that's fine. But it didn't get much better after that. The second half, they look great. Yeah. Yeah, It, and you talk about the second half. I mean, it, it was um, understandable that it probably looked great because I mean, it was a young group against another young group. So, I mean, I guess that's a positive that we can take, Tommy. Is that you know the young guys look good? I saw a few mentions about Alan Carlton, and just to pump the brakes a little bit, I see Jason here saying that Carlton should start over Jose to. Um, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if we can make that proclamation right now. So maybe pump the brakes a little bit on that. But yeah, I really liked Chol. I really liked um, Young. I think it was Young got himself in some some positions, some scoring positions, but couldn't get that final product. Uh, there's one other player that I can't remember right now that really caught my eye for Atlanta on one of the twos. I'm ill country later on, but it's good to see some of the younger kids uh, really assert themselves and perform at a really good level. Granted, it's against, like I was just talking about, younger players, but still good to see them perform well. Uh, the number seven for Chattanooga is Mark's talking about solid. I assume you're talking about Damian Agustin, Rodriguez. Kind of, oh, Damian, Damian Rodriguez. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I agree. Rodriguez, a fantastic, fantastic performance um, throughout the throughout the game. Again, from right up the road. So right up the road in Dalton. Very and strong then, high school program. You have to give so. a shout out too, to to Marcus Nagelstad as well, who yeah. the, he, he's been doing things for Chattanooga now for a couple of seasons. But the guy took advantage of every opportunity that was given, mm-hmm. absolutely. And so, you know, I mean, again, it, it, 
it's, it's super easy to look at that match and be like, oh man, Atlanta, the defense just crapped the bed, right? Chattanooga is a legitimately well-coached team and they have talent. So kudos to them for sure. Um, should it have been 3-3? No, but that's the state that Atlanta's in right now. And that's where Pineda is going to have to work some things and make some things happen. We always go back to what a week ago he said that uh, they've been working heavily on defense. Well, mm. <laughs> now we <laughs> we mm. got to keep working, guys. <laughs> we got to figure out what's going on. So it, it is what it is. But it's a it's the first preseason match. See how they do down in Mexico. See how they do at the AmFam Cup. See how they do against St. Louis. You know, you just have to hope that the only way to go from here is up. Just get it out of your system now. Yeah. I'm going to be worried. If we don't win the AmFam Cup, my entire gimmick's <laughs> gone. Got to go back to back, baby. You have to be a two-time AmFam champ. Yeah. And I'm worried about yeah. it at this point. I, um, I mean, I'm, I'm a little worried too, honestly, but. You put the hey, you put the second team out there. You put the Noah Cobbs and the Shabatus and the Carltons. Um, Cobb looked pretty good, by the way. Yeah, mm-hmm. Firmino he looked pretty good. You got, I mean, you got you got some talent down there with the twos. That, and I know maybe some people that I know a lot of people that listen to this that watch this they do pay attention to the twos, um, and then just as many probably don't pay as much attention. But there is a lot of talent coming up through the academy and the twos. And you should be excited about it because they're, I mean, Noah Cobb, that boy is the truth. I'm telling you, he's going to be something else as he gets older. Uh, so just, you know, it, it, this is a, it's a big bump in the road. It feels like since 2020, but I think the bump is, is almost over, but be excited Absolutely. about the future for sure. hundred percent. I mean, Sydney, you were saying uh, Chol. I thought Chol and Gutman had a nice little combination um, on multiple plays there. Yeah. Uh, we, we knew Chol needed a new best friend with Moreno <laughs> out, and it looks like it's Gutman. So all the better for that. Aruju looked – he looked how he looked in the Open Cup games, right? He was playing against less talent. He was putting a lot of pressure. I think players were afraid of him. Uh, he, his speed, you know, attacking the ball, I think definitely made – uh, the Chattanooga's defense look a little off. Nice seeing two goals. Mm-hmm. So that's that's great that he seems to be gaining confidence. I feel with Aruju, confidence is something that's going to be very important for him this year because it and, looked like it was completely shot by the time midseason came and yeah. he just never really recovered. I will say, I'll, I'll point out too, being there and, and I, I watched um, – his second goal that he scored after the fact, you know, you, you pay attention to the goal, obviously you see what happens, but his celebration after the fact was like, because we're going to get into this topic in a minute with this rumor, whatever you want to call it about Palmeiras down in Brazil, being interested in him or him being interested in them, whatever. But after he scored that second goal, you would have thought he just scored in the world cup. The, the way he celebrated, he j- he ran off just took off running and there was no like rhyme or reason or anything to his celebration. It was just a jump in the air and fist pump. And he, and he did it towards the empty stands on the other side. He was just happy. Like he, he ran off, like just like screaming, you know, and it felt, it looked like the dude just had a huge weight lift on, lifted off of his shoulders. Mm. It's a preseason match. I get it. But if you can build confidence from scoring goals, build confidence from scoring goals. I don't care who you score them on. And then let that carry over. Because, yeah, you look at him last season. By the by the midway point, definitely. You know, he would come out and he would just seemed frustrated. He didn't seem like he was having fun. It was, you know, sometimes it seemed like it was a chore. And then by the end of the season, definitely, he got in there and, in the, the locker room. And the guy just looked like, man, I just want to be done with this season, like all of us. But, yeah, I'll bet, yeah. Yeah. Um, it just he scored that second goal and he just seemed like thrilled. And I was like, hey man, more power to you. I mean, you just scored yeah. in a preseason match, but hey, take it, man. Take all of it and go. And James saying, like, I really do have 90, 99 passion. <laughs> so I mean, hopefully, you know, that 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 pans out to goals in MLS and 
US Open Cup and Leagues Cup and the 50 other competitions that are this year. Um <laughs> no, Cup, exactly. I knew I was missing one. Um, one thing I wanted to touch on. Yeah. <laughs> one thing I wanted to touch on real quick was um McFadden. Who who looked yeah, McFadden looked really good. I agree with that. I forget who said it. But it was- yeah, McFadden looked good. I mean a lot of people will look, look for him to see what step he takes really in his first full season in MLS. But on the flip side of that, I think he can count the number of times throughout the day that Jackson Conway's name was mentioned on the broadcast. Now, Tommy, you probably spotted it too. And Tyler, you were there. I don't know, if, I don't know how much service Jackson got throughout the match. I don't think he, he, he looked jacked. He yeah. <sighs> Absolutely. Dude's definitely been in the gym. I, I don't. I don't think you can take a lot out of Jackson Conway's performance because, I mean, in in one way he did his job by drawing attention and allowing Luis to do his thing. And and another thing to pay attention to as well is, I'm, I'm sure this is the way that they're designing it. But you look at how often Brooks Lennon was getting up on that right wing and. The pairing with him and, and Arujo was – it seemed a little different in the in the sense that Arujo was dropping way more into the midfield, um, making more passes because we all know that's been a lot of people's biggest gripe is just trying to take everybody on one-on-one. But he was dropping more into the midfield and letting Lennon have that space up the right wing to then send in crosses and make things happen. And then Conway is up there, big guy, getting in the way, trying to be a target. And it's opening up. It would be Almada. It was Rosetto this time, who who wasn't moving the ball forward much. But it was it was given Arujo plenty of space to do what he wanted to do. And then of course Arujo, we already know he's great at at a press at a, or you know trying to trying to uh, what you said earlier, Tommy, scare a defense into making a mistake, and that's partially what led to one of his goals. So. Um, it, it, I just, that's, it's worth pointing out because it, I think you'll see a lot of that this year. I think that is by design, but yeah, Conway, I, I just don't think you can take a ton from the performance bad or good getting into good positions. Certainly. Yeah. So yeah, no, it, it was just something I noticed and yeah, you know, I, I don't know if, like you were saying, Tyler, I don't know if you should get too concerned about it, but that's you know, just something I noticed, especially with, um, Yakamana's coming in. We'll talk about that later on, but just something that I was I took from it. Hopefully, that's not a sign of things to come. Well, the good news is, if you don't have plans on Saturday, the game's going to be streamed. Yep, not by Atlanta United, from my understanding. I don't nope. think they're providing the stream. No, so, will we get commentary? I've I have no idea. That is a good question. I know it's going to be on Atlante's website, from what I've heard. But as far as who's doing the commentary, I have no idea. I know Jason Longshore was going down, I think. I'm assuming maybe for the Cruz Azul game. But mm. I don't know what's going on with the broadcast on this one. So, we'll see. <laughs> Next brings up a good point. ATL is guaranteed to win. That's, that's so true. <laughs> I believe that's a 3 p.m. kickoff, by the way. I know some people in the chat were asking about what time it kicked off. I believe that's 3 p.m. Eastern time. Yeah. Kicked off. Don't know if it's geo blocked or not, but yeah, we'll we'll see. We, I'm sure we'll get streaming info um, a little bit closer. I say a little bit closer to the match. It's only a few days away, but I think it's yeah, 3 p.m. I'll have to double check. Yeah, 3 but, yeah. p.m. is what I saw. Uh, I, I say that. Yeah, between now and the time we get to that Mexico trip in a minute, we'll talk about it. I'll double check and look, but I, I think it was three. Uh, well, I think that's pretty much it for the, the game. So let's talk about some transfer rumors, which is leads us into tweet of the week here. Thought this was very appropriate for the past, what, 48 hours? I think I 72 know, I like hours. Weeks. I mean, just every time I would, I, I like to take naps in the afternoon. I do. Uh, <laughs> on my lunches, I'll take a nap. And every time I woke up, there was something new. We signed somebody. Yeah. Someone's coming out. Someone's coming okay. in. There's There's rumors. So why don't we pull up Tweet of the Week here? 
All right. I think that's my cue, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't know if Tommy was doing it. Tyler was doing it. But uh, yeah, if you're listening to the podcast, I'm Jared Smith, good friend of the show, good friend of 30 South Soccer. So I swear to God, Atlanta United has never had a normal transfer saga. And that tweet was from mm, Sunday. That was from the day of the match. Saturday. That was Saturday. Saturday. Yep. Yes, exactly. Because that was when the Yak and Maka Thurmers started picking back up again. Yeah, so Jared tweeted that out on Saturday. And I think the Abram rumor had come out. In the Abram reports, I don't know if those had come out um, around match time or not. But yeah, Jared tweeted this out on the day of the friendly on Saturday. So shout out to Jared because Jared's Jared a good guy, by the way. Smith. Um, yeah, he, he, he's also alongside John, um, over on soccer down here. Um, and then as and you a know, Celtic fan, by the way, yeah, big Celtic fan. So he's been all up involved with the Yakamakis mm-hmm. rumor. So do we want to start with Yakamakis or Arujo? Should we pivot with him real quick since we were just talking about him and get, get that out of the way? You're better at pronouncing the name. So you start with whoever you want to start with. <laughs> Let's go with Aruja because everybody has figured out how to pronounce his name. Um, so, yeah, it, it came out. It, it's been going around now for a couple of weeks that Palmeiras was interested in Aruja and that he was interested in going back to Brazil. And then I think what really set this off was the Goal.com article from yesterday or the day before, I think, that basically mentioned that, yeah, he – he wanted to go back down there, even would take a pay cut to make it happen. And it just kind of added fuel to the fire that was already maybe an ember with those original like rumors from a few weeks ago. Hmm. So you look at gold.com and you think, all right, well, this is this credible source. And it, it is. But uh, then it came out today uh, from an outlet in Brazil and from uh, not not Felipe, not our Felipe Cardenas, but uh, I think Felipe Silva, I believe is his name, that writes for uh, a, a publication down in Brazil, basically came out and said, no, uh, he, according to people around him, he's happy in Atlanta. He's doing his thing. A pay cut is not an option for him. Yeah. Uh, which, I mean, makes sense. Do you know how much eggs are right now? Bro, Do you seriously? know how much eggs are? Nobody is taking a pay cut in this economy except Emerson Hyman. That, that's oh, Emerson man. Hyman is the only guy that can go out there and say, I'm going to rip up this contract yep. and I'm going to go somewhere else, even though I've barely played any soccer for two years. That's Arugio, what they did. They just paid him in eggs for the rest of his contract. <laughs> I mean, it, everything's it, pricey. Arugio's not taking a pay cut. No. Nah. The South American. You know how expensive uh, those short shorts are in his car. Yeah, <laughs> the car exactly. I'll say this: the tr- South American transfer uh, reporters aren't always the most accurate. I mean, there's Cesar Luis Merlo, who's pretty accurate. Fabrizio Romano, who's pretty accurate. Um, others out there, Manuel Veth from Transfer Market, who broke the uh, Luis Abraham story. We'll get to that a little bit later on. But as far as kind of the South American transfer reporters, you have to be very careful from who whom you're getting your sources from or your reports from because a lot of them are just widely inaccurate. And I don't know. I think we're kind of all agree. I don't know if there's too much to this report about Luis Arujo going back to Brazil. Um, it'd be very interesting if he did because... That would open another DP spot for Atlanta United, which <laughs> this would be, again, like I said, very interesting. But, yeah, it, it just seems like a lot of people are saying BS in the chat and just smoke from Brazilian press. I think it's trending in that direction. Yeah, and, and it's worth pointing out here, too. Uh, this is probably a good a time as any, but y- you have to remember, don't be naive to think that Agents, and I'm not saying Arujo's agent, but agents in general, teams, they will put, they're not going to not put stuff out there yeah. to drum up interest in a player. 
Um, you look at this whole thing with, with uh, Yakamakis, and it's like, did the Arawa Red Diamonds ever have any chance of out moneying Atlanta United? Probably not. Well, I mean, but, Mitsub- I think Mitsub- Mitsubishi owns Urawa Red Diamonds, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, I mean. yes. Uh, okay, I'll give you that for sure. But I don't now. I, I don't know what their rules are in mm-hmm. terms of like you know. They, obviously, they don't have DPS and things like that. But you're you're going to. My whole point was you're going to have agents. You're going to have clubs, teams, everything that are going to put out things at times. Not saying they all do it. Not saying. You know, it's, I mean, it's not a valid move, but they're going to put out things, information, rumors, whatever, to, to make the most of what they can from their side of a deal. And it happens, especially, I mean, we just got done with this transfer window with, with most of the European um, clubs, most of the, most of the European sides, their window, and they're slinging money, Chelsea, Mm -hmm. holy crap. Um, Enzo Fernandez. Yeah, it's Rich. wild. So to to think that you don't have teams and, and agents and things out there doing that would be naive. Uh, this with Arujo just seems. I'm, I'm sure there's interest, and, and even the art. The other article said, yeah, Paul Maris is interested in it, but they haven't made any kind of legit offer. They're just keeping an eye on him to see kind of how he does. And and I think you'd be crazy not to take a look at Luis Arujo and see how he does this season, see how he rebounds. And if something comes along, the offer comes along, if you're Atlanta, like, okay, I mean, take it if, if it's a good offer. But right now he is, whether he showed it in 2022 or not, is still one of your most talented players on the side. So take that for what it's worth. I'll, I'll say this about Enzo and kind of getting off topic and going back to Almada. I mean, and the stock rose dramatically off the back of the World Cup. I mean, you look at Almada, he, he rarely played, but still part of that Argentinian national team picture, albeit coming in on an injury uh, with a player being injured. So you have to imagine if Almada repeats or exceeds the season that he had last year. I mean, he's not going to go for like, 131 million bucks, but yeah, I mean, his agents understand. Like, look at Enzo. Enzo. I mean, he got sold for a m- bunch of money that has to kind of, in some form and fashion, help Tiago um, whenever, if and when he decides to go to Europe. So, that's something that is really, really worth keeping an eye on his progression and really the transfer offers that he gets if he does put together really a good half season and sets himself up for a big move overseas in the summer. Yeah, I agree. I mean, of course, there's always going to be the haters. We know a few of them who are going to be like, oh, Almada, all he did was ride the bench for the World Cup. I don't care, man. Like, he was part of a World Cup there. winning squad. He was there. He played a handful of minutes, whatever. Looked good in the handful of minutes that he played, by the way. It wasn't like he came on and just was a – you know, a wet blanket. Like he actually did a good job, set up a big chance. Uh, so yeah, I agree. I mean, he's already coming off of a, a great year personally for Atlanta goes to the world cup. And then if he shows out in, yeah, the first half of the season, especially the offers are already there, but especially by the time the league's cup rolls around in the summer transfer window, I hate to say it, but he he's gone. Yeah. yeah. People are naming the haters now in the chat. I'm not going <laughs> to say them out loud, but I'm just reading. It's fun. <laughs> yeah, we have a we have a good chat going on. If you guys are watching live, definitely uh, on on YouTube or Twitch, send yes. us messages, and we'll try to get them in as much as we can. Obviously, we got a lot to talk about, but we appreciate all y'all's. Uh, all y'all's feedback and, and comments and everything for sure. Yeah, if you're listening after the fact of the podcast, 7 p.m. Wednesday nights, come join us. Projected fee for Almada Bubbles asks real quick. We'll we'll take a quick a quick sidebar. Just throw a number out there. Fifteen. You think fifteen? I mean, seems fair. I go. 20. I mean, how much? 
20, I'm going to say 22. Get, 22. How much did uh, Mickey get sold for to Newcastle again? Oh, man. What was it? 20? I'll, I'll find out. What you got, Tommy? Well, I think it's going to depend on how the season goes. I mean, last season, while it was good at times, I mean, he also got suspended for a few, so he missed out on some of it. I think he, he has to follow this up with a good performance. Him having the name that he went to the World Cup is great. So that's already taken his value up higher. But now adding to this tape of his you know his play and hopefully getting a better team around him, at least the, the starting team, I think that that's going to help as well. So I think that he can get to where you're saying, Tyler, in, in the 20 range. I know James is putting 20, 25 million in here, 28 million, but... Yeah, yeah I, I think that they're going to be able to get to that 20 range, just depending on how he plays. Yeah, and, and then to answer the question, it was, uh, I think 27 million was what it was originally rumored to be, and then it ended up being 26. So either, I mean, whatever. <laughs> That's Bruno huge... say, Bruno say, let's go big, 127 million. <laughs> let's roll. Let's roll. <laughs> the COVID fund loss is over. Like, mm. they're spending again. I Absolutely. think a, a lot of teams were afraid to. I mean, there's still a lot of teams that are doing loans. People only do loans with Atlanta United. Nobody ever buys from Atlanta United. <laughs> but you're seeing, you know, the spending starting to go back up, you know, especially the last transfer window, um, you know, in England. That that was really starting where it started jumping up and jumped up again now. So it, you can only see it going up. And there's going to be someone that is going to want to pay for this and, I think Atlanta United is going to know they're open up for business because as much as the front office wants to say that they want to build around him, I, I don't think that Amato wants to be here. And before you start getting the talk of him, and he's been very professional, I think that's good because I think when a player yeah. wants out, it ruins their value a little bit. People know that he wants to get out, Joseph Martinez. So you <laughs> can, in this situation, he's being very professional and, and he's being an adult. Uh, about it so i think that they need to work together and it seems like we've got a close to a competent front office now and they're going to do what's fair for the player and if he wants out in the summer they'll work on it and i'm sure they're probably already working on a replacement for him now yeah i think the danger too is overpaying for a player and i'm sure yeah in the case of enzo um i'm sure that there's some talk about, hey, maybe they were paid to get him. But, I mean, at the same time, rising tide, right, it's got to help Tiago's value. And, you know, like we've been saying, if he performs the way that he knows how to perform and is able to ride that high that he put or he showed last year, I mean, he can write his own check pretty much. I mean, yeah. within reason, obviously. I don't think he'll go more than Miggy, to be honest with you. I would say 15, 20 at the very least. All things considered, hopefully that he's hopefully he stays healthy and shows re, maintains or exceeds the form that he showed last year. Yeah, I think to me the the reason I say twenty two because the wild the wild card in the whole transaction would be the World Cup. Yeah, because you got to think about how highly certain clubs around the world value just that experience, and they should. It's a big deal, whether people want to try to hate on it or not. It's a big deal. So, um, yeah, I mean, I would love for Almada to stay here for his entire contract until what 2025, I think it is. But just you can't expect it. So, um, a lot of lot of comments and questions over here in the uh, in the chat, but. One that's popped up a couple of times, and this will kind of pivot us over to the next rumor. Uh, Preston asking over or under 15 goals and assists for Yakamakis this season. Yakamakis, I said it right, right? Yakamakis. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Got it. I'm so sorry to all the MLS announcers and Mike yeah. and Jason <laughs> this season for. I, I'm just waiting for how, how do you. How do you announce that when he scores a goal? <laughs> it's just it's going to be interesting to see how they put their little recipe on that. I I, I can't imagine. I mean, I, given the um, English language 
Division announced there's some grief in the past over how they pronounce names. Um, one guy kept calling Gutman Gutman. Yeah. I think another I one was calling somebody else mispronouncing someone else's name. I forget what it was, but I can imagine how they struggle with Yakimakis if they can't get Gutman right. But You know, the notes... Aruju was... The I've heard that like three different ways. Aruju, Araujo. <laughs> Araujo, Araujo. Yeah. Like, yeah, it's all over the place. But the, the Atlanta sends out the notes. All the clubs do that say, yeah. hey, this is how you pronounce it. Uh, you just got to look at the notes beforehand, and you'll 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 know how to pronounce the, the name. Now, I understand. You look at Yakimakis's last name, and you're like, I'm going to figure out a way. But, right. but then if you've got the pronunciation in front of you, you, you can make it. Yorgos Yorgos Yakimakis. Can't wait to see him in Five Stripes. Yeah. Just random thing. There was a years back, there was a hockey player and his name was, it was K A S E. And the announcers start calling him case. And then they were calling him, um, case a, and it turned out that he was telling these different announcers how to say his name incorrectly. It was actually Kasha, <laughs> Kasha. but he was telling these guys how to say his name. And then like, 15 games into the season, like one of the announcers were like, so we just want to apologize to the fans. We don't want to apologize to the player, but he was actually just messing with us, telling us how to pronounce his name. <laughs> Tommy, as a hockey fan, and it's hard to drag this further off topic, does the name Miroslav Shatan mean anything to you? And Buffalo Sabres. <laughs> well, his name is spelled S-A-T-A-N. He's Slovak. <laughs> but uh, that always seems to be a running joke that his name was pronounced Satan, but it's Shatan. <laughs> but um, yeah, but Yakimakis, and the question was over under 15 goals. And I want to preface this again, and I said this a few weeks ago. I don't, I hope that the fans don't put undue expectations on Yorgos Yakimakis. Like if he goes like five or six goal, five or six matches goal list, you know, heaven forbid that. People will be saying, oh, book her out, uh, bad deal, whatever. <laughs> but give him time to adjust. I mean, this is a new country for him. This is a new league for him. And just because he doesn't set the league on fire right away doesn't mean he's a bust. And I mentioned that like a couple weeks ago, and I just felt to mention it again. On that being said, I think if you get double-digit goals out of him, I think that would be a really good big success for a new player to MLS, especially considering you've lost Joseph Martinez, you've lost Dom Dwyer. I think that's pretty much the floor for him is 10 goals. As for his ceiling, I don't know if he'll get above 15, to be honest with you. You have Etienne out there who can score. You have Almada who can score. Aruju who should be putting in a few more goals than he scored. So I think with all that being said, with all those combined, yeah, you'll, you'll need Yakimakis to score like 20, 30 goals. I mean, that 10, 15 mark, I mean, should be pretty achievable. I think he'll get there. Will he score more uh, goals for Atlanta United than Eric Lopez? Yes, <laughs> absolutely. I, I can guarantee that he will. <laughs> Just checking. He might do it in one game. <laughs> Yeah, maybe. Oh, yeah, no kidding. <laughs> but that one goal for Eric was was a banger. <laughs> it was it was pretty. It was pretty. I've shared yeah. that goal like three times this year. Uh, or no, not this year. Well, yeah, yeah, this year because I mean we're basically in January. Every time Eric Lopez would come up, I would just remind Sam Jones of the one goal. He go, he scored a goal, and he would forget like after a week, and I'd send it to him again because yeah. it was a banger. It was. It was a good one. And it was against Nashville, so it was a little flick. More power to him. Uh, um, just, just real quick, and D. Graham brought up a good point in on Twitch um, about maybe potential visa issues that Yakimakis will have to go through you know, coming over from Europe. Um, are we talking about goals across all competitions or goals in MLS? Because I imagine Conway like. D. Graham and Steve will play an open cup to the international restrictions and all of that. But are you thinking like 10 to 15 goals across all competitions or just MLS? I'm going to say I, I would go with 10 to 15 in MLS, yeah. I think. Um, 
But it, but it, we have to point out, and you you mentioned y'all hit on it just a minute ago a little bit, but you have a player that's coming in who his his job is not to be Joseph Martinez. First off, mm-hmm. his job is to not sit in the box and poach goals. He is not going to sit up there and wait around and wait for the the you know the beautiful cross. And then no matter how it falls to his feet, finish it. That's that's Joseph. That's what he does. He you you get him in the box with the ball and he's gonna score. That's Joseph Martinez. Yakamakis is not that. He is going to drop deeper into the midfield. He's going to move at times to both wings. He's gonna be all over the place. He's going to want to play alongside the other guys up front. So he's you're you're gonna see interchange between him and Arujo, him and Almada, him and Etienne. Uh that's just what he's going to provide. And yes, the goal scoring emphasis is there definitely, but the way he plays is not just to sit and wait. He's going to be involved. And that's what, that's admittedly what Pineda is looking for. That's what Pineda wants. So that is then going to open up everybody else to evenly, I think, get on the score sheet a little bit. So you're going to have Arujo, I think, I hope scoring a lot more goals this season. I think you'll see Almada. Obviously we know what he can do. Um, and then Etienne, no slouch either. And, and then you never know the, the other ones, Goopman will probably come walking in at some point and just score like a hat trick. <laughs> so it's there. It's to open up the goal scoring for everyone else. I think that's what you have to keep in mind. Period. He's not going to be, nobody is going to be Joseph period. And there has to be another striker coming in as well. Like, yeah, you can't just go in with these two. Uh, I, th- I think you find maybe a vet that's on a league minimum. I mean, we'll you had one, but he moved to California, so that didn't end up working out. But I mean, I'm sure you're going to be able to find somebody to sneak in there because you're going to need some type of competition. And yeah, who, who's the U.S. Open Cup uh, MVP this year? Who's, who's the Brandon Vasquez? <laughs> right. It's got to be Jackson. But, Conway. It's yeah. got to be. I mean, it's, it, it has to be. This is a big year for him no matter what. And he's going to be expected to come in at times. And for, imagine you're, you're down by one and you bring in Parada and Conway, who are both great headers. Like, that's that's a nice option to be able to have late in the game. Absolutely. Yeah, a lot of people in the chat saying Eric Lopez. I mean, that, honestly, that's not out of the question at this point because oh, God. <laughs> one that we haven't talked about, kind of a kind of an out of left field move was Edwin Mosquera going. Oh, you uh, lost your bet to Doug already. He didn't right. score any goals this season. <laughs> we didn't shake on that one though. So this is this is like null and void. But yeah, I, I just it was I wasn't expecting that honestly. Um, Mosquera going back down to South America and he's on loan. It just doesn't feel like the plan is to bring him back necessarily, but the option is there. Obviously he's going on loan. They have the the opportunity to go ahead and purchase him outright, be done with it. See how he does down there. Worst comes to worst. He comes back up here still on the U 22 contract and he's got a little bit more experience under his belt. That was another move to just kind of make make some more room, at least for the time being. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think you, you he'd be a backup pretty much with Etienne in. So yeah, and then you also have too, Wiley think, waiting. Yeah, so I think he just isn't in the plans of the club. So yeah, wish him well. Um, showed a lot of promise with Atlanta United. Didn't make too much of an impact on the score sheet. Uh, a couple kept of close to scoring. Yeah. Yeah. Kept oh. close to scoring. Decent, decent um, showing. We scored but... a goal. It just got screwed over by Pro, which also yeah. screwed me over by Proxy. Yeah. <laughs> but um, yeah, wish for the best. And, you know, not officially announced by the time we're going live, but it yeah, pretty much seems like it will be official in due time. Here's my rant. Here's my rant for the night. There we go. Doug, last week, when we asked him the question, will Carlos be with this team at the end, by the end of this season? Or going, I'm sorry, going into next season. And he said yes. You look at all the mistakes that have been corrected in the past month 
with loaning players out, somehow getting players to end their contracts, buying out your MVP player. I, I know he's not what he was. The comments he made about the MVP, just everything that has changed in the past month. Somebody made those mistakes that had to get fixed. Carlos made those mistakes. And you have the smartest guy in MLS history coming in and having to clean up this mess, which we still don't understand fully what's going on. I mean, there was, I don't even think that they really wanted Yakamakis as a, as a DP. I think that they talked him up and, and because of negotiations became a DP. It just seems like this is the, the way this entire roster has been formed um, over the years and all the mistakes that they've had to cover up, which Eric Lopez is one of them. There's just no way that I, I think that he can stay here after this, uh, unless there's some thing where all of a sudden he's learned how to manage a, a, a salary cap here. I, I just see no way that Carlos is here by the end of the year. I still think it's a situation where, Hey, show me where everything is. Show me where the ice cream machine is. Show me to read the books. Let's let's let help me understand everything about Atlanta United. Now get out. Just get out at the end of this year. So some people think too with the US soccer openings that have come up come up within recent weeks that Carlos Boca Negra might be uh fit for that. And from that standpoint, I think I'd agree. I don't think from a technical standpoint, from a roster development standpoint, he's proven that he can sustain success. But I think that his ties to U.S. soccer, for better or for worse, would make him a good fit up there, whatever job that you know, he ultimately is offered. So I could see him maybe, and I think I was talking to Doug and Sam a few weeks ago, I could see him mutually parting ways with Atlanta United for him to maybe take a spot with U.S. soccer in some form or fashion. So, no, I agree. I don't think he's here beyond 2023. If he's here um, within the next few months, I think – He's not long for another job. Also, I don't know if if I'm Carlos Bocanegra, if I want to be here much longer, admittedly. Like, yeah. look, we, we've talked about it. We talked about it last week with Doug. But, yeah, there there are wins that Bocanegra's had, just being fair, being honest. Absolutely. You, Tommy, you always mention the Gootman, the, the loan, and then bringing him back, fit in perfectly with the squad last year. You've, you've got great – things that have come out of Boca's deals. You also have plenty that not many people agree with. Just so throwing it all out there. However, on a personal level, if I'm Boca Negra at this point, I, I would ne I would never, ever get on Twitter ever. Like I would never, ever, ever open up my phone and get on Twitter. And you know, I, you feel bad for him, but he has been here since the beginning. Admittedly, your your positions in various uh, managerial positions, players, front office, back office, in soccer clubs, that people don't stay that long. He has been here for a while. The opportunity may come up with this U.S. soccer stuff. Maybe he does move on, and and maybe it's because he wants to. So we'll see, but. I, I do I do think it would be tough to be him and and see himself here after this year after this season. Yeah. Ran so, over. <laughs> <laughs> Great big doggo said Boca has police protection outside his house. I probably would too at this point if I was Good Boca. To see more Good to see more Twitch involvement this evening, by the way. Yeah, yeah for sure. I think we have like four or five people have commented on Twitch, by the we way. We applaud every good. one of you. Yeah, thank you so much. All right, so... so we brought someone in, right? Huh? Yeah. We brought a player in, right? Like, that's... We, we got good news. We do. Apparently. All right, who wants to take it and run with it? <laughs> we'll talk about him for a minute, I'm sure. Luis Abram. From Luis Granada and La Liga dos. I thought Granada was at the top division, but apparently they're in second division La Liga dos this season. 
That shows how much I follow La Viga. Yeah, Granada, um, I actually think, I want to say they got relegated the year that he actually moved from. What is it? What is it with incoming transfers coming <laughs> from teams that <laughs> are getting relegated or have been relegated? I mean, Yakumakis with Venlo and now Abram with Granada. I mean, what's the deal here? <laughs> yeah, it's kind of a wild. Well, technically um, it's with Chris Azul now, I'm alone, but. Where, where he spent plenty of time. And so, and I've had a lot, we've had a lot of people asking, like, what is Luis Abram going to bring to Atlanta United? And the quick and easy answer is the fact that we don't have to force Noah Cobb to play as a center back when he doesn't need to get thrown into the fire like that. Like he's going to be um, a mixture, I think, of depth and he'll start. He'll start probably plenty of matches this season. He'll give Parada and even, I mean, everybody wants to say that Miles is going to be the shoe in and he should be, but he's coming off an injury and you don't want to force something with Miles Robinson that you don't have to force yet. So you bring in Luis Abram. He's an experienced center back from Peru, Peruvian international. Uh, He's his, star period that he had was when he was playing for Velez alongside Tiago Amada, by the way. And he moved to Granada and then was there for a very short time before he got loaned out to Cruz Azul. So he's been, he spent basically the past year and a half or so with Cruz Azul. Uh, you definitely want to look at his time with, with Velez in South America when you're, when you're looking at, what you hope you get out of this guy. But you also have to take into account the styles of play and why he was traded and all that. So you're, you're getting a, a center back who one, probably one of the most important things is he's left footed and that's that in and of itself is valuable. That's a big deal. You got a left footed center back coming in who can you know be right there alongside either Parada or miles and slot right in and and make things happen, whether it's in, you know, uh, another competition or MLS, whatever. Um, there will be times, I'm sure, that we'll see Pineda run out of three center back formation. And so you're going to have all three of them out there. And then you have Noah Cobb waiting in the wings at, at some point if he has, if he, if knock on wood, the injury issue happens again. So, Looking at his stats, you, you've got a guy who he's in his prime and even a little bit at, at Cruz Azul. What you saw from him is he's not going to be one to to go one-on-one and put a ton of pressure on an attacker. He's going to position himself well. He's going to hang off the attacker a little bit and force them into backwards passes and things like that. He's not going to rush in, put a leg in, and get, and get beat. He's – very much all about if you, if you watch his, his plays, at least what I've seen, very much an intelligent center back, which is what you want. You've got a guy who seems like he's going to know where positionally he needs to be on the field. He'll be able to, um, he plays fairly well with the ball. Um, not afraid to tackle when he has to, but I think the biggest thing is going to be his intelligence and his IQ. And 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 Mark, I, I see your comment. Um, in his, I say in his prom. In his prom, I mean when he was kind of having his hot streak at Velez, and and since then, you know, he's he's fallen off a little bit. So, um, we'll see how he does. If, if it seems like it's going to happen, nothing's you know happened with all these rumors. These are all still technically rumors, I guess. It's all more or less a done deal. It seems like, but there's been nothing official from Atlanta. But yeah, and you, yeah, you talk about. You know, fixed you know, rotation and Pandita talked about a few weeks ago saying, you know, we're going to keep checking on Miles. We're going to keep checking on Brad just to see how they do in training. He said, you know, it's tough to pull them out because they're doing so well, but at the same time, they want to be mindful of the fact that they have been injured long term, especially in Miles' case, because we're talking about Abram. But they want to be cautious and want to be careful because we, 
you, you, you don't want him to do further damage to his leg. So I think rotation will be very prevalent, at least in the early stages. You can't expect Miles to go 90 minutes from the jump. That's simply not feasible with a guy who essentially blew his knee like nine months ago. So you have to be very careful, especially considering the quality of player that Miles Robinson is. So you might see a Perotta, you might see an Abram, you know, two man sentiment pairing from time to time. I mean, you may see Cobb get a little bit, not a ton of minutes, but you'll get, maybe see him get some minutes. Um, and yeah, you know, that's why you brought up Abram. I think he'll start uh, eventually alongside Robinson. I think we we're just talking about that, but for now, at least he's in there to rotate out and really take the pressure off Miles, feeling like he has to come back 100 right away because it's not fun to tear your Achilles. I've never done it personally. I don't want to, but <laughs> I. I it's good to have somebody like Abram in here who has experience, who hopefully he's not on the tail end of his career. I mean, he's a little bit older, but I feel like center bets have a little more tread on their tires. Nah, he's got, a, he's 26. Yeah. I think he's got plenty 20, of time. Yeah, 26, 28. Yeah, 26. But yeah, you don't want to say he's young because he has middle age, I guess, in soccer, especially if you leave, like he have 20, 21 year olds playing left and right. But I right, hopefully he pans out. I know that there's some skepticism about him, but I feel like he'll be a strong signing for Atlanta. Depth is just going to be important for this season, and I think that that's really what the the front office is preparing for. I mean, you look at Guzan, and you look at the experience they have behind him, where they didn't have experience, and they had they did have one guy with experience, but he was on his last leg, literally. And ended up retiring middle of the season. So they found a couple guys I think that will have a, be a bigger, higher quality than what they had going the last year. And center back here, I mean, you never know what's going to happen. Luckily, the uh, schedule congestion isn't terrible. In the summer, you get a you know a few more midweek matches, but nothing, you know, like it was years ago. So you're you're good there, but yeah, you're going to need some some quality depth. And, and, and this is what everybody asked for. Signing. Yeah. But like, this is what everybody asked for, right? You had no real senior leadership on the team last year, well, at least on the field. Basically from the time, what, Gazan went down? Because you, you, Miles, yes, experience. But you're talking now about a, another guy, a center back. First of all, Ozzy will be back, it seems. Uh but you're looking at a, a center back being brought in who has played around and he he's done well and he's been with a variety of teams. So you've got another guy back there who can can help usher things along and it can help somewhat dictate the tempo. Of course, that's what you want your midfield to be doing, but it'll just be nice to have another voice back there that knows the game. That's a that's it's it's an intangible thing, but it's a big deal. You never know how people are going to react to MLS. You know, there's there's stars that come in that just can't get used to it. Um, you got players that have struggled in other leagues that come in and just are superstars. You know, become fantastic players here. So it, we don't know what he's going to be. You know, he was on a little bit of a downer lately, but maybe this is exactly what he needs. Westbury, man, I meant to bring him up earlier when we were talking about Chattanooga, but we're such talking a about villain. Veterans. He just he's got that face you just want to punch. Oh man. Like he's on our team now, so like now I want to high five him on the street. But man, when he played for Toronto, one of the one of the goal they had the, the best goals of the year on Apple TV, and yeah. one of them was against him. Yeah. And I was just laughing. I was like, Oh, you suck. You suck. Well, I'm gonna go ahead now and he's on our team now. Quentin from ever coming on the show. I think that, that ship has probably sailed now. <laughs> Every I just time want to know where he gets his hair gel. Like that, that's all I really want to know. Get him on the if show I can't get him. my hair, if I could grow it out a little bit, I'll I'll uh, be able to do with that. No, I like him now. Yeah, He's on our team. <laughs> no tip for you, life. Sydney. Yeah. <laughs> um, but no, yeah, I do. I do agree though with what Mark is saying. Like he never really got tested, but uh, he was on goal now d- down where we were sitting, where most of the supporters, Atlanta supporters, were sitting. Um. 
I mean, I, I was I was impressed at how he was trying to command his back line. That was something that I think we missed a lot with other goalkeepers last season. He was vocal, making his presence known. Um, I don't know the stats. I haven't looked, but from the eye test, his passing accuracy seemed pretty pretty solid. So, I mean, it's a good option for sure. And by the way, I'm just going to throw this out there because on Twitter spaces last season, we had quite a bit of goalkeeper talk. And one of the things we're still doing this, by the way, this season, we are. Yeah. Um, I think probably our, our first, first one will be the, after the AmFam cup, right? Yeah. 2023 AmFam cup champions. (laughs) We go. We'll be celebrating hopefully. Um, (laughs) But yeah, one of the big conversations was how I think a lot of people would talk about how short they they thought Rocco Rios Nova was. <laughs> I, I don't know. Uh, that was just like such a big deal for some people, and I understand. Like, yeah, I mean, you can't go out and be a be a goalkeeper in a top tier league and be like you know four or five or something, like, <laughs> you know, but like five eleven is not the worst thing in the world. And if I'm not mistaken, Quentin Westberg is the same height as Rocket Rios Nova. So a lot of it but just comes hair, out of experience and technique. Get them another, like, the hair, right. yeah. <laughs> the hair does the thing for sure. You know, Zilf writes free Garces. And this is the same situation with Conway that I said years ago. Like you want these guys playing right now you don't want him sitting on a bench like when Conway had to come in there and they weren't playing him a few years back it was just wasting his time like he should have been playing starting every game with the twos right getting as much time you you want the young players being able to play especially he's coming off injury right so that's something where you want him to get his confidence back and get his time and all these all of our three keepers on this roster are it's just this year all of them, all their contracts will be expiring. So if you're looking, I mean, even what's the other one? Is it Reyes? Garces. And then you have Dio. No, Garces. And who's the other young? Uh, Reyes. Oh, Reyes. 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 So yeah. you've got two young guys next year that, as far as salary cap wise, are going to be very cheap. And if you get a quality of that, then that's even better. I mean, we've been the highest paying team for keepers for years. I mean, Brad Guzan's made a ton of money. They, they gave him a lot and then they gave him an extension and it was a lot. Okay. You could say he deserved it. Won some else cup and they extended it and he took a pay cut and now he's still here this year. That's fine. This is your last year of veterans. You're probably going to have a young guy in, in next year. I, I, I would assume that would be the game plan. I don't think, Looking at what Seattle has done over the years, they have trusted their youth. Uh, And I think that you've got two very high prospects at the keeper position, both coming off injury. Let them play. You know, if you've got to loan one out and, you know, make sure that both of them are getting as much time as possible. That's that's a perfect situation. Let them fight for the starting spot next year. And you, now you've got all that cap space, that Brad Guzan cap space to go spend it in the midfield. Yeah, it's a good point. I mean, I know we've gone kind of high and right with the, the topic, but but I do agree, though. Like, he, he, Reyes and, and Garces, um, I'm not really sure. So, Garces is listed on the official roster as of the last one that got sent out. But the last one that got sent out was back when the buyout happened on Joseph. So... Th- I'm hoping you've got some movement, official movement here very soon. <laughs> the candle. Um, so, that, you know, you, you kind of get a refreshed look at what the the actual roster is going to look like because you got to understand some of these guys are going to get loaned out to the twos, uh, things like that. So I just don't know – what the ultimate plan would be. I do agree, Tommy. I think Garces, it seems like, is the one that they're very high on. I mean, they obviously like them both. They both got plenty of time last season with the twos, but uh, they just have to have plenty of time this season, especially if the goal is to have one of them move up and be, I don't know about your primary goalkeeper, not that I don't think they can handle it, but 
I don't know. It just depends on how much you want to put trust into into a younger goalkeeper like that, because that is one position that traditionally you 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 typically want somebody that has been around the block a little bit. Not that you have to. I mean, you look at Slonina, who who just mm-hmm. you know made a move, um, big time move, and I mean has done done pretty well. Played the other night, um, didn't look bad. I mean, he he get, had a goal scored on that really he couldn't do anything about. Uh, for the men's national team, but yeah, I mean, you got three of the four goalkeepers that are on your roster as we speak that are not going to be here, or at least their contract's going to be up at the end of the season. So I don't know. It's it's an interesting conundrum they are in. Yeah. You guys want to move on to Apple TV? Yeah. Sure. By the way, good news. Uh, so we'll talk about season pass launching but yeah good news t- for kevin egan fans he will be a part as a play-by-play announcer so good to see that yep. and shout out to wwe they actually did a video where where one yeah. of the other interviewers interviewed him about you know being able to handle mls and handling them so they're it sounds like wwe is gonna be promoting them uh kevin as well for for soccer yeah so he'll be doing Matches on Saturday, and then what is it, Monday? Yep, Monday night round. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, I mean, the dude's gonna be busy. I mean, a lot of flying, but yeah. I'm just glad. I'm glad all three of them made it back. All three of the typical crew made it back in some way. Mm-hmm. So you've got you got Kevin, who's gonna be announcing. I hate that it, it won't be just Atlanta. I'm, I'm presuming it won't be just Atlanta. That wouldn't make sense. Uh, but just to have him back on some broadcast would be great. Um, I think Jillian Sakovitz is up in New York doing the actual um, in-house stuff. And then Mo will also be an analyst. So though they won't be together, at least they all made it back in some fashion. That's It's good to see. 100%. You know, when I, when I heard last night that Apple TV was, you know, officially going live, and I think it went live at midnight or somewhere around there, it, it, it was hard to find. I think everybody was having a hard time finding it. Because if you opened up the Apple TV app, I've, I've got an iPhone, so I was going through. Couldn't find it anywhere. Typing in MLS, nothing showing up. It's showing some of the future games. And then I typed in soccer, and then it finally was able to show up. And some people had to update their... Magic word. Yeah, some people had to um, update their operating device to be able to get it, which was crazy. Didn't think that that would be something you would need to do. But that was how some people got it. But as soon as you open it, like it just looks legit. Like yeah. especially you're yeah. able to go pick your team. Like you, you, you pick Atlanta United. I already nice... knew my team. I was like, oh, this is cool. Yeah. How much they've been listening in. <laughs> <laughs> but it's just beautiful, like how you're just able to see. You know, I mean, they got like a nice picture there. You look up, they've got uh, video, previously unreleased videos of MLS Media Day, uh, top five goals from last season, which was nice to see. Miguel uh, Almiron, got... iconic player. Mm-hmm. Almiron. Um, one thing that I would really, I haven't gotten that far into, I watched Atlanta's was they've got like a, a profile for each team mm-hmm. and yeah. what's, what's that team about? Uh, they, I mean, they went in everything, the first season, the playoff game against Columbus, you know, Joseph's historic run. They give a little dig at Kevin Egan's the one, uh, the narrator for it. I uh, takes a little dig at Orlando and yep. it, <laughs> which was nice to, nice to hear. But it was fun. It was a lot of fun. He really tried to sell how the team is still good. So good for him for for you know fibbing a little bit there. But <laughs> it was it, it's so far it, it's a great experience. You can go back and you can watch old games from last season. So that's why I, I picked a couple games just to start off. You know, looking at the games where we allowed goals early on to see what we were doing. But it's nice. It's nice to be able to see that. One of the complaints I saw that someone mentioned on Twitter and we'll see if it's true is how much content are they going to be giving away for free that normally they would on the Atlanta United YouTube page on Twitter, on Facebook. I mean, they give you a lot of Atlanta United's always been social media wise, top notch, top three in the league. Right. So how much are they going to give away for free and how much are going to be on Apple TV? That's a good, and that's a question. We, we, we're, I mean, it's, no, none of us know at this point, but it's going to be so, interesting to see what they release throughout the year. I'll say this: I was looking at so the schedules. Uh, it lists 
and what games will be free on Apple TV. And most of them will be the ones that are already on Brackets TV, whether it's on Big Fox or FS1. By the way, those matches will be simulcast on Apple TV. Uh, MLS season pass. But yeah, the first week is free. Um, and then I think there'll be several free matches. Uh, Atlanta at Toronto is, or LA versus Toronto week two is not free. But I think the one against Charlotte, that's going to be on Big Fox. That'll be as free as well. So yeah, it looks like maybe two, three, four, five free matches a week, something like that. At least initially, just to hook people in, and then we'll be putting more and more behind the paywall. Um, but yeah, all teams will be producing their own content. It looks like uh, Atlanta and that are hiring a bilingual host, I believe. I don't yep. know if they've already hired him or her, but yeah, the job post I saw the job posting was still alive. They may have just forgotten to take it down, but yeah, I think the MO is like I said, have the teams produce their own content. Uh, free matches will be available, and they'll nest those as the season goes on. But yeah, I wrote about uh, DirtySouthSoccer.com earlier on Wednesday, so definitely check that out. Ariel's asking, are you able to share Apple TV? Yes, you can. Uh, you, If you set up an account, you can create family members. Uh, they don't do blood tests or anything like that, so you can add your friends. They just need to have an Apple account as well, and you'll be able to share it. So uh, I split five. it with three people. Yeah, I think you can do up to five total. Yeah, if I'm not mistaken. So, uh, yeah, we got got a few questions in the chat. Um, that was one of them, Ariel. And then Mark was asking. Uh, it's my understanding the teams are producing their own content. Yeah. Correct. That is correct. They have um, Atlanta. Luckily, was already kind of on point with it. Mm -hmm. But you have a lot of teams that were having to hire a bunch of people right. to try to be able to produce this kind of content. And, and it kind of ties into what you were asking earlier or what you said you saw on Twitter, Tommy, but I, I don't know what content they will put on Apple as opposed to just putting out. I, I would think in my head, what, what makes common sense to me would be, they would have, have some of your little offshoot things. You know, we always go back to some of the videos that they produce um, especially after wins or or good draws, the nonstop access videos, those things are freaking fire. I love those. Uh, I don't imagine they would stop doing that kind of stuff. I think it's something that's already in place. And I don't see Apple coming in and being like, no, you can't do that. Or no, you have to put it on Apple. I just, the, the team still have to have a social media presence. So I just don't see them cutting that kind of stuff out. But yeah, the stuff's created in-house, which is cool. Uh, Atlanta already has a very, very talented media department, media side, social media as well. So I think you'll see a lot of good stuff. And, and yeah, if you haven't checked it out yet, you, you can go on to Apple TV, go to the Atlanta like channel, quote unquote. And it's, I mean, it's good stuff. That, that, the intro video that, uh, a uh, friend of the show, Mateen, he wrote, and then you were talking about Kevin uh, was the narrator in it. It'll give you, it'll, it'll give you goosebumps, like for real. It, it'll give you chills. Um, very well done overall. Like the quality was great. That that final scene where it shows like Mercedes Benz and like downtown Atlanta with the the sun setting was was pretty sweet. So um, anyway, yeah, if you haven't checked it out yet. Definitely go check it out. It was it was really, really cool. Really well done. I'm excited. It'll either, either go very well or very poorly in 2023. So yeah. <laughs> I think it's gonna ramp up. I think they've there was someone tweeted this a couple of weeks ago that said that as far as expectations go, it's gonna be ramping up throughout the year. Yeah. yeah. Well now you, you might see a ladder on the uh <laughs> the stage. You know, in the studio, you might have a ladder with some paint next to it. <laughs> You're really still trying to, to build the stage there. But, yeah, it's – this is nice. I, I'm curious – that was the other big Twitter conversation I saw today is how does this help grow MLS? And that's going to be a real question here. And I'm sure they'll release some type of study from it or MLS will come up with some type of numbers yeah. here. But – how often, because Bally's, despite, I hate Bally's with 
I can go on an hour conversation about everything they hate about Bally's. Bally's was on at bars. And I know that it's 2023, but there's a lot of bars that don't have streaming devices on their TVs. They have older TVs. Are they going to go out and buy Apple TVs or any type of streaming device so they can log into Apple TV to show them at the bars? And that's going to be a big question because the other, the opposite was a lot of bars didn't have Bally's because Bally's was so expensive for the bars to have. So you'd go, I went to the official bar of the Atlanta Hawks while I was in Atlanta. I couldn't make the game. And they said, we don't have Bally's. Hmm. Made absolutely zero sense. But you're going to run into this situation as well. And I think it's going to be worse than Bally's because I don't know how many people or how many bars are going to pay for the MLS package. And you could share it with five TVs. You know, at least that's how my understanding of how it's going to work. It, I'm not sure how it's going to grow the sport overall. For us, for people that love MLS, this is absolutely great. But how are you going to get new fans to join it? And I think it all yeah. it all depends too on what Apple does to promote it. Because at the end of the day, you may not have a soccer fan, but making some of it free is is a step in the right direction to at least still have that that little bit of a teaser for people to come in and, and see it. But Apple is putting so much money into this deal, they have to put out the the money to to push it to people who might not otherwise know or care much about MLS just to keep it relevant because you do want it to be one of the the big sports leagues in the United States. Yep. Um Mark pointed out something that that is important as well. It is available worldwide. That's a big deal. Mm -hmm. Uh so what it's going to do for the sport here in the US, don't know. I think over the next four years, as the World Cup gets closer, I think that that is a golden opportunity for them to really, really push some stuff. But you're, if you're Apple, you're still going to make significant amounts of money back because of things like yeah, it's it's worldwide coverage, and it's not just the 350 million people that live in the the U.S. It's everywhere. Not that MLS is huge everywhere else, but still, you still have people that are going to want to pay attention to it. And yeah, that's important. Yeah. Well, and Dallas is filing bankruptcy. I mean, yeah. that's one of the things that they're talking about is about them filing bankruptcy. So what happens to the baseball? What happens to MLB? What happens to the NBA? Uh, I mean, the NHL, I mean, they're still on Bally's, but they're on ESPN a lot. Like, what are going to happen to all these leagues with likely – Valley's going down. I was going to say, like, other leagues are watching to see how you know, Apple does on, or MLS does on Apple. And I think if it goes well, it'll really set the tone for you know, MLB. Uh, NHL, well, NHL's probably, well, they're locked in with ESPN and Warner Brothers Discovery, but like other leagues, maybe smaller leagues, you can say, hey, this is going well for Apple. Let's, we, we, MLS, I should say, let's get a piece of the pie. And maybe they purchase. Um, MLB is, they already have a package on Apple, but maybe you see the NHL, you see NBA say, hey, let's purchase a little bit of the pie and get some of our games on Apple on a regular basis while keeping their terrestrial, or not terrestrial, but their traditional deals with Warner Bros. Discovery with the NBA and NHL, and then ESPN with NHL, and then MLB and all of that, so... Uh, They'll be taking a look at how MLS does and that really get the ball rolling even more with streaming sports. I mean, Thursday night football is already on Amazon. So let's see what happens with this as it's continue to roll on. And that's a problem with it being on Amazon. Like a couple friends of mine wanted to go out and watch a game. Yeah. Like, like hey, let's go get dinner. And we went we went to the bar to go watch the game. And then we realized same thing with US men's national team, women's national team matchups with yep. Warner Bros. Discovery. Same issue. So they had this stream using, uh, I think, Universal. So, so through NBC Universal, Comcast essentially. So, yeah, that's that's definitely a good point. It's it's definitely a problem. I mean, and like NFL was the biggest sport here, and now you've taken yeah. it away from bars on a Thursday mm -hmm. night 
to go out and watch a game. Like if it's local coverage, you can still watch it. Like so, if if your right. local team's on it, but if it's any other team, you can't watch it anywhere. Like you can't go out and watch it unless they have streaming. I mean, the bars are going to have to change 100%. Like, they're going to have to invest into it. And I don't know what the cost is. There's always bars usually pay more money to be able to mm -hmm. stream games. So that'll be interesting how it goes. But, yeah, I, I don't know for the, the, the person that wants to go out and watch a game. I don't know how that's all going to work. But I'm sure, you know, there's this, you know, special bars all set around Atlanta for supporters groups to watch games. So, you know, they're already investing into all of this well, to make sure that they're going to watch it as well like uh, i think you're gonna have a handful of clubs or bars in each city with with a club that this is just going to be part of what they do yeah. you look at the ones in, in atlanta that you have a lot of they're, they're official partners in a lot of places they're you know big uh supporter groups supporters uh where a lot of their people go so they're gonna have it but like if, if i walk down the street to three dollar cafe and i tell them to put on an MLS game. I have no idea if that's going to happen in the, in the 90 minutes that the game is on, you know? Yeah. So we'll just have to see, but I don't know. I mean, you think maybe Apple could, could have some kind of partnership with like establishments to be able to do something. That's, mm -hmm. that's a possibility, but I, I don't know. It's a good question. And one that mm -hmm. I don't think we're going to have an answer to anytime soon. Yeah. We'll see. We'll see. A lot of talk about it, though. A lot of talk about mm -hmm. it, definitely. And, and it's hey, it's the first day, so yeah, let them work out the kinks. Hopefully, hopefully by the twenty fifth, things are going well, and mm -hmm. we'll see how the coverage is. Flawless yeah. launch, though. I mean, really flawless launch. Yeah. I think that's what they wanted, and I think the MLS, you know, elite fans have already paid for it or the season ticket yeah. holders have already logged in. They were freaking out at like, I think the email went out around like around nine, 10 AM. Yeah. You know, there were, there were people upset that other people were already had access to it, but they had to pay for it. Right. Like, but when mm -hmm. am I going to get access to this? Right. Uh, so fans are, fans are excited and yeah. as they should be. Yeah. Have you, have your post game content? Cause I see some people asking about that in the chat too. Uh, just a mm -hmm. quick note on that. You'll have like the whip around show. You have the yeah. the post match content, all that good stuff. So it it'll be it'll be good. I, I'm I'm yeah. excited about it. High expectations, but I think they'll deliver. So good to good to see. Yeah, some people maybe had had some issues. I see the colonel. He was he was mentioning like he had some issues getting it going, but he got it going, which is good. I've yeah. seen some people say they had some initial problems. I didn't really, um, but it's you know it's technology. Some people are just going to have issues, and others aren't. But I'm sure people with Apple had the easiest time that already had an Apple mm -hmm. device or an Apple account. Yeah, which <laughs> that's my case. So luckily yeah. I could just add it and be done with it. All right. Mexico. Got to talk about Mexico real quick. Yeah. So I went to you on Saturday. Yep. Uh, TBD. <laughs> I think I saw three o'clock TBD. Sure. We'll get the exact time closer to the match. At Monte, as we mentioned, we'll be streaming that match. Um, but yeah, I think it's, it's a step up for Atlanta United. Um, I don't, I'll be a little, admittedly, don't know too much about Atlante. I think they're in the, I guess, second division, whatever yeah. it's called in Mexico. Yep. So, yeah, um, step up in class for Atlanta United. I think they'll be very tested. I'm even more tested as they were against Chattanooga FC. Then after that, you have Cruz Azul, which is another club that will be tested even more. I think along with that, you have to ask, especially with a club like Cruz Azul, are Atlanta, are, are they going to play their first team? I don't imagine they will. I think it will be second division or a second team, reserves, academy, like is traditionally the case. I don't think they'll try it out the first team against Atlanta United. But, yeah, it, it'll still be a heavy test. I mean, the, the height they're at, the elevation they're at, they had to kind of adjust to that when they got there. So I think that'll be an adjustment they'll have to make. And I think it's like the third or fourth time they've gone down, down there. So, yeah, it'll be, it'll be a challenge. I think they... I think they'll run out the first team for a little bit. 
I think. So yeah, Atlanta or uh, Atlante? Or no, it, Atlanta. I think Atlanta will okay. run out there. Yeah, I think they will. I think um, they will. But yeah, Atlante. I mean that that you're right. I mean it's it's middle of the week. I mean no, this is this is a Saturday game. It's the, the next week. one. Yeah. Um, yeah, it, it's kind of hard to say what they're gonna do exactly, but I, I think the big one for the trip is gonna be the Cruz Azul game. Certainly, that's gonna be where you're gonna you're gonna get a lot of. Again, preseason. I'm going to say it. It's preseason, but I think you're going to take a lot more out of the Cruz Azul match than you will um, Atlante. I think Atlante would be a very good test for a lot of the guys that normally play for the twos, and that'll be very interesting to see. But uh, it, you know, this is this is one of those. I noticed it this week. Uh, we talk about it on the Twitter Spaces. We've talked about it a little bit on here, but we were always talking about you know the the morale of the team and things like that. And, and I, you know, I've seen people talk about it like in the, in the chat and all and on Twitter, but one of the big things that we, we mentioned is morale. And like, you know, when you see these players doing stuff outside of soccer, doing stuff outside of, you know, just going and in, in to their quote unquote job, they're hanging out, eating dinner, barbecue and whatever it's, it, it, it you need that relationship off the pitch, right? You, you, I mean, in any job, really, it's not just soccer, but you need that relationship off of your normal work. And because all it does is develops your chemistry and your relationship when you are quote unquote at work and already seeing some of the, the pictures from players and even from the club, seeing kind of what they're doing together. I, I think this trip, and they did it last year, similar. Mm-hmm. Uh, it, it's it's an important first step, and I hope it carries over a lot better than it did last season. But, you know, you got guys going out to dinner together. You got guys hanging out, just having fun, and that's what you want. And it's kind of an underrated, again, it's an intangible thing, but I think it's a big deal. And uh, they've been down there now for a couple of days, left right after the Chattanooga match, more or less. And um, we'll be down there for a little over a week. And so, yeah, I mean – I'm excited. This is probably the part of the preseason besides the AMFAM Cup that I'm most excited about because I think this is where you're really going to start to see some more chemistry develop with the players that are a part of the, the camp. Mm-hmm. What game did our players get hurt in last season, in the preseason? There was that one game that got real chippy. Yeah, that was the one where Machope got injured. Um, who was who else? Was it Rosetto that got a knock? There was a handful of players that got kind of just beat around, and then and then Machope was out for a while after that. Um, mm-hmm. But that yeah, was it was season, it felt like yeah. number one thing you hope too that no one gets injured. Yeah, that was a that was a rough one. That was way more in depth than it should have been, <laughs> I think. So yeah, hopefully you don't get something like that this time. And I think. You know, Atlante, that, that's the thing with the second division sides is you got guys going out there trying to prove something. And you yeah. look back at the one last year, and that's how the team found out about Ronaldo Cisneros. So mm-hmm. these guys are going out playing against Atlanta United, and they've got something to prove. And yeah. when you've got something to prove, you're going to be a little more physical and you're going to do things that you probably otherwise wouldn't. So mm-hmm. um, that's the one I would watch out for. Cruz Azul, they know the game. They know what this is about. It's a preseason match. Their their squad's basically set, so wouldn't worry worry too much about it with that one. But it's always something to watch out for. They play Cruz Azul again in League's Cup too. Yeah. So be interesting. We're lacking depth right now. I don't think this team has a ton of depth, especially in the midfield. So injuries in certain positions can get very scary here. Yeah. yeah. Until more people come in. And I think we're still going to be bringing people in throughout, you know, as long as the window's open and they're not going to rush some of these things. I mean, a couple of these moves right now were absolutely needed ASAP. Mm-hmm. But there's other positions that still need to be attended to here. And hopefully we're able to get a couple players in before the opener, what, 24 days ish. So yeah. it any type of injury could be a concern. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you just have to hope that whatever reinforcements are brought in, that's what you have for at least the last couple of matches. Cause you got the same, you got 
the Toluca match, the AmFam Cup, which is two weeks from now. And then you got St. Louis, and then a week after that you have the opener. You hope you've got something close to what you want opening day by the AmFam yeah. Cup, but at the rate they're going, you, you, it's just hard to say, especially when you when you take in visa issues and all that kind of stuff. So mm-hmm. I don't know. I, I'm, I'm curious about this Mexico trip, though. I'm curious to see how they come back out of it and and what chemistry they've developed. Yeah. All right, because we could talk about Mexico, but we'll we'll be talking about Mexico definitely on the next show, uh, because we'll be having one that night, if I'm not mistaken, right after that Cruz Azul match. Mm-hmm. Um, two quick little points: new trophy in the trophy cabinet. <laughs> Paulo <laughs> Neto won it. Win in the the EL, EMLS League Series One. Uh, he won the cup last year. If you didn't know, um, you may or may not care about FIFA in terms like FIFA, the video game. No, um, he does. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's a big deal. A, you know? He's made some bank off of it. He absolutely he? has. And uh, proud of him. The, the dude's yeah. freaking talented, man. And he won this final, uh, by the way, nine to one, which is wild. So um, it's like me playing, but I'd be on the, on the wrong side of that score line. <laughs> yeah, me too. Me too. We're talking about Halo or something. We'll, we'll, that's a different story, but I get to join FIFA. Uh, but good for Paolo. Always yeah. good to see him doing well in um, EMLS and the leagues worldwide. So we'll be updating you all, I'm sure, about how he does. He'll have the League Series 2 here in a couple of weeks, I believe. It's in February. So last little bit. I don't think it's um, FIFA anymore. I don't think it's going to be called FIFA after this year. I think it's called. Uh, they changed Sports the name FC. to something. Yeah, EA Sports FC or something like that. Yeah. Lost the rights. But I think yeah. all the like the teams have to opt in. I don't know. It's it's getting weird. Politics. How how that works, yeah. Uh all right, cool. So last little bit. In case you don't know, I wish they made a bigger deal about it. I really do. But the FIFA Club World Cup going on started today. You had today you had all Ali versus Auckland City out of New Zealand. Uh, All Ali, by the way, has won their domestic league like 41 times. (laughs) So um, more power to them. They're like a perennial. Less power to them if you're other clubs in that (laughs) that league. uh, (laughs) I feel yeah, I feel I feel sorry for the rest of them. But no, you know they they put on a pretty good showing today against Auckland City. Uh, First half was basically stalemate and they scored at the very end of the first half and then went on to basically dominate the rest of the match. And that too, Seattle will be playing Saturday. So what's it streaming on? Uh, it was on FS two. Yes. Okay. So FS two. Yeah. Um, great stadiums. I mean, great turnouts. I just wish that it was a bigger deal, you know, exactly. Seattle, man, I'm, 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 Hoping they do well. If they win this match, they go on to play Real Madrid, which will be interesting. Heard of them? Yeah, heard of them. Heard of those just guys. a little, just a little team. Pretty good club. Yeah, but <laughs> Ali, I mean, forty-two dollars of forty-two league titles, thirty-seven Egypt Cup titles. Like they essentially are the New York Yankees of the Egyptian Premier League, essentially. So, super dominant club in Egypt. I'd like to think Seattle will stack up against it pretty well. So I think we're all rooting for Seattle as MLS MLS fans to do well. I don't know. I don't think they'll beat obviously Real Madrid if they win this match, but it'd be nice. It'd be cool to see. It would just be cool to see an MLS team go up against Real Madrid. So Either way, more power to them. They got to make it through Al Ali first, and uh, they didn't have a bad game today, so it's not going to be a cakewalk by any means. Mm-hmm. But yeah, uh, happy for them, and uh, yeah, MLS side that is in the Club World Cup. So go cheer them on. Bruno asking if we're going to have a watch party next Wednesday at Bruno's place. <laughs> <laughs> Byob. Yeah. What time um, is what time is the game on Wednesday? I think that one's at three as well. I think I'll have to double check. Yeah, 
I mean, be something we yeah. can explore. I don't know. We haven't talked about that. But I can cancel some meetings, I'm sure. <laughs> Find yeah, out to Atlanta last minute. Oh, I know. I mean, I, I can't do that, but I at least cancel some <laughs> meetings. And my office is in my bedroom. I got a big TV in there, so I can just turn uh, and nice. watch the game. It's nice. Uh, Hope my boss isn't watching this. <laughs> <laughs> Very unlikely, but <laughs> <laughs> right. Very unlikely. But he should be. Yeah, yeah exactly. all your friends. Tell exactly. all your friends to come and watch us and subscribe and all that fun stuff. Well, yeah, yeah we'll be live great. tweeting uh, the game on Saturday, I think, maybe. I I don't know if I'm available, but we'll see. One of us yeah. will probably be on the account it live tweeting the game. Today. Unless, Tyler, you're going. <laughs> no, I can't make it to this one. I know I'm not. <laughs> I'll just whip on down to Mexico City and make it happen, but got too much going on it's all right yeah we'll be live tweeting the game that's always been fun yeah for us and um i'm trying to think because we'll also have I, i'm not sure if jackson will be doing it from dirty south but um you're, you're pretty much stuck with two live tweeting sessions for every game from now on if you follow both so um take your pick yeah take your pick and tell us which one's funnier if you see a lot of gifts, that's my that's that's me. It's I, I had way too many gifts. I looked the next morning. It's like you posted like sixty gifts. I'm like, oh, that was that's me having a, a quick drink. Quick Let's drink in the game. Well, this has been good. I don't think is there any 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 final little bits? Do we want to do a quick prediction on Atlante? Yeah, you guys didn't not. respect Chattanooga, by the way. I said two to one. You did, you and did. I said Sydney was scoring the game winner. That didn't happen. I I get it, but you guys said three nothing. I think there was a three nothing and a three one, one prediction. Do we want to save our predictions for the Amfam Cup? I feel like I'm that'd be apropos. That. I'm cool with that because these two, they could go either way. Honestly, yeah. I'm predicting I Louis predict- scores again. Okay, that's all I got. I predict, I predict no one gets hurt. Yes. <laughs> I predict we allow a goal in the first 10 minutes. <laughs> now, if you're taking bets, that's up there. They have yeah. those type of bets online. Like, is there a goal in the first 10 minutes? Yeah. And we'd be rich last season if we knew what we <laughs> knew in Atlanta United. Right. <laughs> All right. Well, well, thanks for hanging out, everybody. Yeah. Everybody on Twitch, YouTube, Twitter. So that's Everywhere everything, right? After the fact. After the fact, if you if you listen to us all the way, if you had a long one hour and 43 minute drive, we're glad we hung out with you. Thank you for coming to say hey. It was it was real. It was a good time. So, uh, for all of us, Sydney, Tommy, I am Tyler Pilgrim. Make sure you guys are following all of us. You can see on the screen at ATL Pilgrim at SH Rights at Tommy ATL 96 and also at Scarves in Spikes on Twitter. So you'll see the links and all, but we appreciate y'all hanging out with us and we will see y'all next week.